Okay, so for our next talk, we have an ethical hacker with WordPress expertise. So let's give a big round of applause for Matt Heltz. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah, I forgot the favor, actually. Oh, you forgot the favor. So uh, <laughs> if you have laptop, get it out because you are going to need it. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. So I'm Matt. I hack WordPress. I hack everything that I <laughs> basically come across. Of. Why do I do that to make the web more secure? I work at a company called Backcrowd. We do crowdsource cybersecurity, which is basically uh, bug bounty programs, pen tests. Um, but personally, I am a big fan of WordPress. I've worked with WordPress for years. And I started uh, with the security team. And I started to just hack along, uh, find vulnerabilities in themes, plugins, and basically everything um, that is out there on websites. So before we start this talk, I have a few things. What not to expect during this talk? Since this is going to be a live hack, this is nothing recorded. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong, honestly. So, so uh, Thomas Edison, heavily paraphrased, said, success is 10% inspiration and 90% preparation. Yeah, kind of. So um, this is not going to be that. This is not going to be, we have a German word for chalk and talk, Frontalunterricht. I'm not going to be a teacher. I'm not going to tell you basically, hey, this is done like this, this, and that. But what we are going to do is basically we are going to hack a WordPress website all together. So if you want to follow along, you don't need any special tools. You need a browser and you need a terminal. doesn't matter which operating system. You can get out your laptop and you can follow along. Perfect. So this is a... 20-80 chance, this goes sideways. So either you laugh or you learn, hopefully both. So this is the agenda that I have. Intro and what to expect. We already done that, so ooh, cool. So uh, why to hack yourself? Why would somebody go in and try to hack a WordPress website or even your own WordPress website? I will explain several reasons why that is important for you, your business, and maybe your customers if you're an agency. And then, after all, we're going to get to hack some stuff together. And maybe if there's time, there's going to be an FAQ, maybe, and if I feel up to it. <laughs> so why hack yourself? First of all, of course, to get more secure. What does that even mean? So there's a little story time. Uh, show of hands, who here has ever locked themselves out of their front door? Yeah, that, that's more like it. Okay. So I, of course, did that at one time. That's obviously a picture of me and not AI generated. That was life. Um, so this, here's the thing, what I did back then. I was locked out, didn't have money for a person to call to open the door. So I figured out, okay, if I can jimmy myself or jam something in between the lock state of the door and basically get it to hang on upon its hinges and put it out, I might be able to get in. And surprisingly enough, I did. Obviously, another picture from me walking through that door. And I was really, really happy about it because I'm back in. Yeah, 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 cool. I can get back where all my stuff is. Wait a second. That was pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> so if I can do that, everybody else can do that. So not a great idea. So I got a better door. And what's the key takeaway of this really boring story? So you only know what you know. You only can fix stuff basically from which you know it's vulnerable. This goes for doors. This goes for cars. This goes for clothes. And of course, this goes for your website. Next, why you should hack yourself to understand your website better. You need to ask yourself a couple of things. First of all, what is the main goal of your website? Stating, so is it selling products? Is it only publishing information like a blog? Are you collecting for a cause? Or whatever you do with your WordPress website, ask yourself, what is the main cause? You might already know that. But if you go back to your roots and say, OK, this is actually what I want to accomplish with this website, whatever that is. Um, next, what you want to do is basically 
how can, ask yourself, how can people accomplish this on your website? So usually, let's take the example of a shop. People can go in and purchase products in your WooCommerce shop, click on Add to Cart, go to the cart, go to the checkout, go through the whole process and pay for it. Great, that's the normal way to do it. Um, and how would you not want people to do that? For example, if a person would be able to add stuff to the cart and generate coupon codes to basically pay nothing for it, or go in and basically change the amount of the overall payment to zero dollars and then check out, you will get nothing, they will get the products. Of course, you will have other checks in place. However, there's a technical issue there. So basically, this is, this is a little bit of think like how is it possible or how it would be possible to circumvent what you're trying to accomplish. Next, you need to ask, what is the security mechanism that's preventing a malicious actor from doing that? Basically, getting a zero dollar amount. What is the security mechanism? Is it uh, built in a WooCommerce, for example, that you have, okay, it's not possible to change the amount. This is generated by the backend. And is that working? So here's the most important question. Now try to circumvent that yourselves. So go in and really try to, hey, can I change this on the browser console to zero dollars? Can I somehow add unlimited uh, coupon codes that you found on a weird website somewhere and get to zero dollars? Try it out. And if you can, great. Now you know what you know from step one. Now you can fix it. If you can't, even better. And do that for every aspect of your website. Or have a professional do that, because men don't, don't want to. Or, uh, maybe they can do after this talk. So the key takeaway is think like a hacker, which is funny enough the, <laughs> the main topic of this talk. So thinking like a hacker basically doesn't mean that you need to be very sufficient, technically sufficient, but very knowledgeable or very um, curious about things. That's the only thing, being curious and trying to do stuff uh, with your website that it's normally not supposed to do. Next step, why you should uh, hack your own website to streamline development. So here's a question for you. What is the purpose of brakes on a car? Who here thinks that the purpose of brakes on a car, this is not a trick question, um, is to slow or to bring a car to a halt, to slow everything down? Show of hands, who thinks that is the main purpose of a car or brakes of a car? Okay, actually it was a trick question. So <laughs> the thing is, it's not about making the car go slower. It's exactly the opposite. It's making, it's allowing you to go much faster. Let me explain by a short video here. If you just have a straight line, right? If everything works smoothly in your process, a car with brakes would be as fast as a car without brakes, right? Because nothing, this, this is really not a trick question. As you can see, it's basically just the same thing. They reach their goal at the same time. However, okay, cool. I just got denied. Cool. That's the fun things about being, doing stuff live. So, but what if something happens? So if not everything goes a straight line or is pretty smoothly. So. Let me show you something. These are the latest data breaches that have happened yesterday and today. And as you can see, June 14th, we had just something come in, and we had just something else come in, insurance provider, Keytronic, a bank. These are real life data breaches just happened the last 24 hours. So of course, not always everything runs smoothly, right? So. And that is when this curved line comes in or this curved street. You have children playing, you might have a brick wall, you have trees. So why is the following happening with no brakes and why is it happening on the right side with brakes? The thing is, if you don't have brakes, you need to go very slow to not hit a brick wall, to not have hit children, to basically not kill somebody, right? Which is, which is great. With brakes, you have the ability to stop if something happens. So you can go much faster to the point where you need to brake. 
and then go around. That is the same with security in web development. Okay. So the key takeaway here, basically, um, the, sorry, the screen here is flickering a lot, so I can't really read. <laughs> so the comparison to brakes in a car and security in development is basically this. It helps prevent accidents. Of course, it's set for both. Both prevent accidents. So provide safety for everyone involved, including the passengers, including uh, the people that are on the street, for example, your customers. Horrible things can happen if it fails, yes. I would say so. Hitting a brick wall or hitting playing children is pretty bad, but also getting ransomware, getting a cyber attack, losing tons of customer data is also pretty bad. So uh, can be operated with your feet. Obviously, that is true for uh, most cars, but not for security and software development. And it comes with a factory default, which is true for brakes on a car, but not in software development. It, of course, comes with framework, with WordPress. We have a great framework. We have great plugins. We have great themes that take things seriously. And WordPress has amazing features to basically give you security when you need it. But of course, since we are such a large ecosystem, sometimes developers are not implementing these features, or they can be circumvented. So that is the real reason to basically check everything. So speed up your business by not slowing down your overall process. So remember the key takeaways. You only know what you know, and only known problems can be fixed. Think like a hacker and be one step ahead of them and speed up your business by not slowing down your overall process. OK, I see some laptops out. So let's get down to business. And that's why we're all here, Hacking Life WordPress website. Nobody's here to help see me talk and see some funny slides. So please go to the following website, volwp.com, just within a browser. And remember to think like a hacker. So I'm going to switch right here into my virtual hacking machine. <laughs> it's just a Kali Linux. This is the site that you should all be seeing. We have my setup is as follows. We have here uh, a private uh, browser tab where I'm not logged in. And for um, yeah, basically uh, demonstration purposes, I am also logged in on a non-private tab. So the first thing that we want to do is reconnaissance. Reconnaissance basically means let's see what we can find on this website, which actually help us maybe try to hack it. So there are a couple of things I like to do first. WordPress has a great REST API, and they have great endpoints as well. But for some endpoints, they're not really necessarily needed for everything that uh, yeah, normal users would do. So for example, what we got is the um, media endpoint, right? So this is uh, uh, volnwp.com. Let me bring up the address here one more time for you. So this is it. Is it readable? Yes. Perfect. OK. So and then if we go in and check the media endpoint right here. Or not? Am I bl still blocked on something? Let's check that. Yeah. Cool. No, I just entered the wrong endpoint. Like I said, this is life. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong, of course. In the meantime, while this loads, I'm going to explain something about this. Media endpoint. Maybe the site is just overloaded from all of you checking it. I did not get a great. Okay, cool. I'm going to have a talk with my host. If anyone know a great host here? <laughs> okay, we have finally got it here. So uh, this is the media endpoint, like I said several times while everything was loading. So the media endpoint basically um, just displays all the media that you have uploaded onto your website via the WordPress media file uploader, which usually is nothing, usually. However, people also use it as a kind of Dropbox thing. 
So we got something nuts and fruits. Obviously, this is a squirrel website, so this is probably nothing. So let's scroll down a little bit. Oh, we got something here for your eyes only. That sounds promising. So let's just go in and check out what this is. But we want the full resolution, of course. Yeah, I'm just going to get another host right after this, I guess. <laughs> so everybody who's following along, stop. <laughs> In the meantime, while this site loads, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more. Oh, it looks like this person, this website owner, has uploaded an ID card as well. And while we're at it, let's scroll down a little bit more. What we got here block header that looks totally fine. Squirrel mascot that also looks fine. So I think. I think we're good here. However, uh, it seems like we still have some <laughs> things to load. So the problem here is that if you use um, your WordPress website as the WordPress website as is intended, it's totally fine. But if you start uploading files and, wow, this is slow, and stuff that's not supposed to be there. For example, your ID card because you need to go on a holiday trip. This is exposed. This is public for the internet. And a couple of years ago, there was a huge um, problem with a pharmacy who enabled people during COVID times to upload uh, their receipts and their doctor's notes to their website to get their um, yeah, medication delivered. Of course, this resulted in uh, yeah, a lot of people having their personal identification information public available on the internet, like this drunk fellow right over here, for your eyes only, or we, they uploaded the ID cards, right? So this is something that uh, this endpoint is not made for. This endpoint is made for only public stuff. So always try to check what you're uploading because hackers and everything that is kind of malicious can grab the PII data and basically uh, have a lot of fun with that. So um, that was this endpoint. We also have another endpoint, which is kind of tricky. So uh, the thing is, this endpoint from many security experts, is they say it's not really a problem. Because what is displayed here are the admin users with the, for example, admin's log. Right, so this is the username to log in. Um, personally, I think it is problematic, and here's the reason why: you will ne never need this endpoint in a real environment. And if I, can, as a hacker, can get 50% of your login credentials, which is the username in this case, I can then start brute forcing the passwords. For example, from data breaches, we just seen there are a lot of data breaches out there. Only three happened uh, today, or were disclosed today. So um, I personally think this endpoint should not be public. What can we do about it? So um, when you're a WordPress website owner, you can restrict the WordPress API from the public. There are a lot of functions you can put in your functions uh, PHP. There are a lot of tools and um, yeah, also a lot of security plugins and themes which restrict these endpoints to the public. Everything inside WordPress in the back end, which also uses these endpoints, will still work. But on the public side, if you're not authorized as an admin on the site, these won't work anymore. So this is something I always like to do first when, uh, when I do my reconnaissance on the website. The next thing that I really like to do is to see um, what is actually on the website itself. So obviously, it is a Squirrel website with a lot of nice people in here. And it loads pretty fast this time. <laughs> So uh, let's see what's in the news as well. So we got some blog posts. You can now upload images. Oh, upload. I love uploading images. Um, how do I do that? Oh, of course, just by a file upload. So why is that problematic, you would think? Because an image basically doesn't do anything. Well, normally JPEGs, PNGs, WebP, they don't. However, we have this great file format called SVG. And SVG is 
probably the, the greatest thing ever to happen to a hacker because you can input JavaScript in that. For people who didn't know, executing JavaScript on a, on a <laughs> non-controlled server by yourself is just plain beautiful. So what I have here, and I can show you that for a second, I have created uh, some cross-site scripting attacks within, uh, for WordPress specifically. Um, and for those who are following along, want to follow along later, just a side note, all of these I have open sourced. You can get the link by contacting me, whatever. You can just Google it. Uh, so this is nothing that I keep to myself. Um, and we will try, and I will try to show you what happens if I upload um, basically a cross-site scripting file or an SVG that I control. So basically, here's just JavaScript, uh, which brings up an alert on the site which says, hi, I'm Matt. Cool. So we've uploaded that, and we get an uploaded image URL. So here's the thing. If, I, if you would be the website owner of vulnwp.com, and I will contact you saying, hey, great squirrel website. What is that weird image over there? Is that an image of yourself? You would think, okay, that this link is probably fine to click because everybody basically says, stop clicking on stuff. Also, there are stickers. You can get free stickers after this. Um, stop clicking on stuff is one great rule. And everybody tells you, hey, please check that the link that you're accessing is probably safe. Most people would think, okay, this is my own website. This is safe to click. So it is actually not. The alert happens. So if I would be to input then a whole JavaScript website which would clone your website, redirect yourself to my shop, to my Squirrel shop, and I will get all the profits, which will completely be possible and has, been, has happened a lot of times, um, this will be pretty bad, right? But also, the avid reader and the person, the, the folks just, uh, yeah, looking very closely, seeing that I also have more stuff we can look at. So I have uploaded a cross-site scripting SVG here when I, uh, which is called cross-site scripting WP posts uh, SVG, nothing happens over here. Why does nothing happen? Basically, this is the JavaScript that's being sent and I'm creating a post be because I'm not logged in. As a not logged in user, I can't do anything with this one. However, I can send it to you as I am here the locked-in user. Nothing happens as well. But wait, if I go back in and reload the blog, this is the wrong one. Here, there we go. No, of course not. Bear with me. I'm old and slow. We have suddenly a new post without doing anything. The problem here right now is saying nothing. Sorry about that, click here, I can say insert more. I can put anything on the site as well. For your users who regularly show up on your blog and maybe have even um, yeah, an RSS feed or anything new that happens will automatically be pushed to them, they will vis visit the site and get more aware. And this is happened very frequently. So it's very, very important to check the file types that you allow to be uploaded. So there is, of course, one last thing left, and this is how to add a new admin user. Um, this is a fun one. Let me just go into the code real quick because we will need it on later. So basically, I'm just crawling an endpoint um, saying user new and giving that person basically admin rights with stuff I control. It's a user login with the password that I have here, and I also control this email address. So when I go in and then upload this file, send it to the owner of this precious Squirrel website, saying, hey, great website. This is a weird image. Uh, please have a look, or where do you get the image? Whatever my context is. And they open this up. Cool, it's just an image. However, if I now go, go to the US panel, we have a new admin user right here. Pretty easy, 
pretty disturbing and pretty easy, like I said, pretty easy to do. I'm just going to delete that one because you all saw the password. So. <laughs> okay. Um, so key takeaway <laughs> is basically um, limiting the, the stuff that users can interact with with the with website. I mean, it's not often that you see a website where it just basically says, hey, come on, upload whatever. Uh, okay, it's just image files, but also you can upload SVGs. Not that great, but it has happened and certain plugins or certain themes allow for people to upload uh, profile uh, images and avatars if because they don't want to use Gravatar or something else. Um, and suddenly, a lot of hackers got in and just injected malware and created admin users and such. So it's pretty important to, if there's any user interaction, to limit what they are be, that they could do. Also, you can uh, yeah disallow SVG image upload because you usually don't use it while you're not creating uh, the site. Cool. So that's out of the way. So uh, this is all stuff which is pretty common. Let me show you something which is not commonly known. I mean, we all know of, hey, keep your WordPress updated, keep your plugins updated, keep your themes updated, install a security plugin. But there are a couple of things that are often overlooked. If you don't have a great host, obviously I don't have one because it's slow. Um, but even if you have a host that doesn't really care about what you're hosting on there and leaves all the configurations to yourself, there might be a few problems. Who here knows what a suffix file with a dot, for example, dot um, HTML, will do if basically opened by a browser in a normal use case? Not that many. OK, let me explain to you. A web server will usually, when properly configured, will not display that because that is a hidden file in the Linux subsystem if you're running Linux web servers. However, if you don't configure itself properly and you have a Linux system, you usually have a bash history in there. And I've come across this multiple times when I'm doing pen tests for WordPress website. That this is not properly escaped, this is still visible from the web server end, and you can actually see what has been done here. So let's take a closer look if there's anything that we as a, we as a hacker can actually use. So, okay, we see uh, <laughs> it's using Lightspeed, want to bet. Um, they added the WP config, they restarted the Lightspeed server, they did some commands, nothing interesting. But wait, what is this? Seems like they did a database backup and they did a complete WordPress backup in the WordPress root, which funny enough we are in. And they let's see if this still exists. Okay. I cannot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, is it too small? Oh, yeah, it's really not that great. Let me just try to figure something out. Nope. Uh, sadly, this is an uh, online virtual machine. I can't zoom in here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, OK, so basically what it says is that somebody created a backup over here, a backup zip file or a, a compressed file, and it looks like they never deleted it. So let's see if we can open that file, if it's still possible to open that file. It loads, it loads, which is a good sign, and it is. Okay, so let's just download this one and see. Oh, oh yeah, downloading stuff is going to be fun. Oh, 40 seconds. That is actually pretty quick. So it is obviously the server <laughs> which I'm on. So right now, it looks like we have a complete full site backup that we can just download because somebody did not delete it. And we know that because the bash history was visible. So let's just see what happens if it's uh, downloaded in full. And this is actually more, more common than you would think. If you have a good managed WordPress hoster, um, this is not happening usually. But if you host it yourself on a Linux server uh, or you have a sysadmin who just doesn't care, uh, this this happens pretty frequently. Yeah, absolutely. So um, 
you just go into the uh, on the website itself, right, and write dot bash history and append it, basically, on uh, the URL. So it's just dot bash underscore history. The bash history is everything that a sysadmin or a person has done on the server uh, in the yeah in a certain amount of time frame. So let's see what we have in the file itself, which I was sure I had opened. There we go. And we have the full WordPress website, including the WP config in here. So that would be all that we need as an attacker if we open it to get access to uh, yeah, the WordPress database. We have the auth key, we have the salts. Of course, this is not a real file um, we, for demo reasons, but this has happened a lot. So it's pretty important to check if your web server is configured properly. So this might be an error on the sysadmin side, but let me, and again, show of hands, sorry I'm letting you do all the gymnastics today, but let me ask you who here has ever had to make a backup of their WP config file because they're editing something in that. Show of hands. Perfect. Who here used an online tutorial on how to properly do that? Okay, cool. So <laughs> here's the thing. Um, I've seen a lot of online tutorials telling you to just append something on the copy of your file. So you take your WP config, make a copy, and call it underscore backup, for example. Great idea, because just with prefixes on a suffix site, the PHP file is no longer a PHP file. It is now just a regular text file. And I've actually uh, written some code for that, um, which is called the WP config finder. It's also free and open source, and you can, you can have it. Um, and what this basically does, it does nothing else than request a lot of URLs which are commonly known as endings from tutorials. For example, <laughs> back backup, I don't know if you can read that, uh, BU back and stuff like that. It does nothing else, right? So it's, it, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, to get that. So I just have to check how I written that. I think it's you and then HTTPS and without the end. So what this will do, perfect. Uh, it will check all these um, URLs with those endings on the WP config file and see if we find something. It does that in parallel and it's usually pretty fast but not with this server. While this is doing that, um, a small anecdote as well. So this is not only, this has not only happened, what I've seen on the WP config file, but also on a lot of other sensitive files as well. Because you can have backups from pl backup plugins as well, which are usually just um, named after a weird string so they can't be found. However, people are lazy and just don't want to remember it and just call it backup.zip. I usually check for that as well because just like with the bash uh, history, we can find these things just like that as well. So it's pretty important to get a sense of not only credential hygiene, but also data and file hygiene, right? Perfect. So. Um, while this loads, <laughs> uh, it's a WP config finder. Yeah. Um, at the end of my slides, you will see a link, and I can, uh, yeah, well, you can get them these tools all from there. Cool. So just checking my time. Okay, cool. We have a little bit left. <laughs> so there is one thing I want to show you. Um, one last thing that I would really like to do is actually go into the source code and actually see what is happening here and what is under, under the hood of WordPress. And one thing that I can see what we already saw on the bash history is that, we, uh, that it's using Lightspeed as a plugin. And yes, this is gonna 
be about keeping your plugins up to date. However, I want to show you what happens if you don't do it or really show you from a hacker's perspective. So if we just go in and Google uh, Lightspeed will no. Well, no. ability, we can go into the WP scan, um, which is a great tool uh, where you can see, okay, this is a great vulnerability. And we just saw that there was light speed in version 5.6. So we have light speed in version, everything under 5.7.1, 0 0.1 um, is vulnerable to this endpoint. So this is great. Um, remember when we created an admin with a cross-site scripting upload. So it looks like we can use that endpoint and showing, oh, there's an actually, uh, <laughs> very nice, there's actually a complete proof of concept here. Um, we can use that tool and that endpoint to basically trigger a cross-site scripting attack without having to upload something. So let's see if that works first. WP.com, CDN status. So basically it says right here on alert, so we'll get another uh, cool text box um, when an admin access that. I'm just using a call command right here, so it's nothing too fancy, but everything is running really slow today. I'm sorry about that, but like I said, life is life. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, while these things are running, let's, let's take the Q&A session right now, because we have, I've talked a lot of things. I said this is not going to be chalk and talk, and I'm sorry, this is chalk and talk right now, but are there any very pressing questions right now that you want to have answered as we have our last 10 minutes? Okay. Uh, I said, yeah, just, just pick a person. <laughs> okay, we have one in front here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rafi from PatchStack. Uh, Hi. I want to ask, uh, so in WordPress, uh, if there is like a one case of XSS, uh, anybody can compromise a full site, a full website or server. Is there any way uh, that can be implemented in WordPress core to like prevent these cases from happening? Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I think there is a way. So there are multiple ways. So we've seen in the last year, what I've personally seen, and you guys at Patch Deck would have seen that as well, that a lot of stuff is coming right in with session stealing. That is the most thing that I've seen how WordPress websites get compromised by script kiddies, right? So, um, and session stealing usually happens via the cross-site scripting attacks or because people's devices get breached. And there is a pretty simple way to do that in WordPress core, in my opinion, and that is validation of session and validation of input strings. So um, I know it's not an easy task, but there are multiple open source tools which WordPress for core could implement that just checks if the authorized request that is coming in contains malicious stuff. There are also great tools out there um, security tools like firewalls, web application firewalls that already do that, but we could implement that in core, and I think it is our duty to start doing that. So, yes, so basically validation and implementation and session checking would be possible and I think would be a great benefit. Thank you for that question. Okay, we are seeing that um, my tool right here checks for the WP config backups and also while we're doing multiple things at a time, it seems like that our cross-site scripting attack on the Lightspeed endpoint has worked. So let's go back to our locked in um, yeah, page and see, perfect, it looks like we've got a cross-site scripting here. So it's not just an alert, so there's nothing, nothing great about it. However, you've all, of course, remember uh, the cross-site scripting I showed you with and the ability to add an admin. So what I've done here um, is basically took that payload from the cross scripting, URL encoded it, uh, because otherwise the string would be very, very um, hard to <laughs> sanitize, and put this in 
just a curl request like the scene we, the one we've just seen uh, right there. So if I would go in and basically run this one on the WP website, we get an OK back. And as we can see right here, we don't have another user yet. And now we have a new administrator just by utilizing that endpoint. That is the problem with cross-site scripting attack. And that was a great question because I personally think uh, that WordPress can prevent that within core. In the meantime, we have found something. We have found a WP config file, or my tool has found it because I'm lazy, like any developer should be. So let's see. And of course, because somebody read an article saying just append the backup file, <laughs> we now have full access of that. OK, we are perfectly on time <laughs> for the latest FAQ section. So let me just bring this right up here. Thank you for listening thus far. Um, please ask ahead questions. If we don't have time for all of them, I will be chilling out on the bean sacks over there. So you can just come and talk to me. I'm happy to answer every question. So let's open up to the FAQ round. Thank you very much.